Okay, let's get started. Uh, we welcome you all again for the um, uh, sixth session. I'm presenting the um, session six uh, slides now. So, so far we have been taking a look at um, industrial IoT. I think we looked at uh, manufacturing, uh, smart uh, cities, automobile and agriculture and so on. That's where uh, the main driver for uh, sensors and IoT is. Uh, I think uh, uh, to Gugan's point, the, the money is in industry. Um, so that's where the industries can afford uh, those sensors. So, uh, but at the same time, there are sensors available for consumer. Um, so today, I mean, in this session, we'll take a look at smart homes and appliances and see what that looks like. And then I'll give you a live demonstration of a sensor that I have at my home. Uh, so it gives you an idea of um, uh, what is happening in the, in the sensors at home. So as usual, the topics we will do is we will take a look at um, uh, what is a smart home and what are some of the technologies used. Uh, again, this, this does not mean that a, a home will have all the sensors. Uh, these are some of the sensors that uh, maybe some homes will have some, some home will, may not have all of them. Uh, but we'll take a look at uh, the technologies used and the role of sensors, you know, uh, how they are used in the smart homes deployment. And like I mentioned, uh, give some examples of uh, how um, the sensors are used in smart homes. And then I'll finally open it up to a question and discussion. So smart home, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is not a typical home, uh, but uh, when when builders and, and uh, companies who are serving in this market, uh, when they take a look at home, uh, these are all the various areas that they consider. Uh, it, like I said, it doesn't mean that every home is going to be equipped with all the sensors. Uh, but let's take a look at look at them. So, for example, smart appliances, right? You may have a fridge or a microwave or a toaster, a washing machine. Uh, those those appliances um, uh, will will soon pretty, will will soon have sensors. Uh, today, they already have sensors. For example, uh, your washing machine may have sensors about timer, right? In terms of whether the 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 what the water content, the moisture content, the temperature. Uh, so there's a lot of sensors that are already uh, the, the washing machine has. Likewise, your fridge has uh, the temperature sensor. It has got a thermostat inside uh, because it needs to maintain a certain amount of uh, coolness, right? Whether it is in the, in the fridge or in the freezer. Uh, so a lot of those sensors are, uh, are hidden uh, from, the, uh, from the user. Uh, you might see them in, in some display in, uh, in some of these appliances. Uh, but pretty soon, the the large uh, appliance companies like Samsung, LG, and, and Onida, and so on, what they're planning to do is they're trying to uh, bring the sensor data out to users. So as consumers, we can also uh, not only get uh, the data from those sensors, but also we can control them. Uh, it, the sensors can take action, uh, whether it is you know in reducing the temperature. Uh, you want to put it in, you know, uh, low, high, medium uh, range for for your fridge. Uh, those things can be controlled from your from your smartphone. Um, uh, so likewise, your washing machine, you can turn on, turn off. You, you don't have to be near the washing machine. Let's say if you're a, a multi-story uh, apartment complex, you 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 may you may not have a a person who would go there, or you may it may be an elderly scenario. Uh, so there are lots of use cases where some of these machines can be operated remotely. And uh, so the the sensors in these smart appliances uh, could become handy in uh, in controlling them and, and alerting any any potential problems with these appliances, right? Uh, those are all some examples of that. Uh, then smart media. I mean, these days, uh, people might have uh, an entertainment system. You may have a, an stereo system. You may have uh, some musical instruments connected to it. Uh, you may have a, a, a smart media, they call it. Um, so your TV connected to, a, to your uh, music system. Um, it may have a FM radio. So all kinds of um, uh, media uh, appliances can be, can be controlled, uh, whether it is a volume control or changing channel, whatever you name it, right? Uh, so those sensors could be uh, could be uh, could be used in, in that in that case. Uh, air control, I think, um, uh, good air ventilation or circulation of air inside the home is is very much needed. Uh, there could be air purifiers, uh, right? For example, uh, you may have uh, a need to have uh, 
some some uh, very sensitive people to be living in a in a home where the air needs to be purified uh, so the air control uh, air purifier has uh, sensors as well uh, so there are uh, those those sensors can be used in terms of you know what should be the uh, the the speed of the fan uh, you want the 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 filter system to go in low medium high speed and uh, what is the current um, uh, level of uh, air quality so those things can be not only measured but they can be controlled as well uh, this one is my favorite i think um, uh, background music basically uh, you may if you have let's say if you have uh, multiple rooms uh, you may want to have speakers connected in different rooms so this comes under the entertainment uh, uh, category where uh, some of these newer homes uh, they are building with uh, built in speakers right in each one of the homes Uh, they may have uh, they may install speakers and the speakers uh, can have sensors and say whether the speaker is on or off what is the volume level all of that information can be um, can be transmitted to uh, to a central system and then you can control them from your uh, from your mobile phone central heating this may not be a, a requirement for for us in chennai but uh, you know up north in, in in some state where it gets really cold in the winter uh, homes are equipped with a heating system so so you want to make sure uh, that the whether the heater is a gas heater or an electric heater or even hydraulic uh, hydrogen and, uh, water based heaters are also uh, available so basically the sensors uh, that uh, that measure the the amount of gas that is coming in the consumption of gas uh, or electricity what uh, temperature that you are setting the uh, the heating uh, equipment at and it is functioning correctly and if there are any fuses that need to be looked at so many uh, components within the central heating uh, system can be um, uh, can be uh, monitored using sensors uh, safeguard i think this is mainly you know security um, uh, one one area is uh, let's say um, uh, many of the uh, homes that i that i see here uh, they have sensors uh, when when a window is open or a door is open uh it senses the proximity right uh, some of them have uh, optical sensors where uh, when you open a door or a closed door uh, you may be obstructing light so if you're interested in, in optics uh, as part of applied physics optical sensors could be uh, could be a great field to to do further research on you know how quickly can you sense uh, something is obstructing uh, uh, the line of uh, light right so so optical sensors are used for um, uh, door open door close window open window close um, even the door knobs when they are uh, in this position that position uh, you can uh, sense them and uh, so you can uh, so you can alert uh, people saying that hey your front door is uh, is is broken people are somebody is trying to get in um, so a lot of security uh, use cases for uh, for for this as well Uh, video intercom i think this may be um, becoming more and more common uh, today uh, in 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 modern apartments you may have uh, you know a, a peep hole camera where you know who is uh, at the door when somebody rings your doorbell uh, you want to make sure it is a person that uh, that you you are okay letting that person in and uh, some other apartments are now coming up with video intercoms so basically um, uh, you don't have to be even near the door Uh, you get an alert on your phone you can take a look at the camera so you know exactly uh, who's behind the door and uh, you can even talk to them and uh, and say if it is a, you know a delivery person who's de- who's dropping a food or some item uh, you can say okay leave it at the door and then that person goes away uh, so so lots of use cases for uh, video intercom uh, again that, that all depends on the sensors Uh, it senses uh, that somebody at the door and then that camera turns on and automatically you get a video feed into your into your mobile phone uh, so those systems are becoming uh, more and more uh, popular mainly because it directly impacts the the security of the home uh, right you want to make sure that um, uh, no stranger can come in and things like you don't even have to open the door uh, to talk to somebody so so those are all some some use cases uh central ac um, again uh, very similar to your heating it is air conditioning uh, but very similar use case you need to be monitoring the uh, the, the temperature the thermostat um, uh, as well as the the, the, the compressor uh, pressure and things like that so you want to make sure that those thing those sensors are working fine 
uh, light and curtain is, is is more of a luxury type um, basically uh, if you have a, you know a, a large home where you have windows the, that cannot be reached and you have a curtain or a, or a window um, a curtain that needs to be automated uh, then there are sensors that tells you whether a curtain is open or not open or fully closed uh, so there are use cases for that uh, same thing for chandelier lights and so on uh, where you can uh, it can sense whether the lights is on or not and you can you can turn them on or off uh, so it's a collection of uh, sensors uh, like i mentioned not all of them are uh, absolute must have uh, some of them are, are luxury some of them are, are important to have uh, some of them are security related some of them are uh, cost effective uh, some of them can save um, uh, energy uh, some of them can uh, can uh, can prevent a disaster. Uh, let's say if a central heating system is is not functioning, you want to know. Uh, so those sensors in these type of situations are going to be uh, essential for uh, for emergency situations. And then security we talked about. So hope that gives you an idea of um, the type of sensors that uh, uh, can be used in the homes. Uh, I think Guggen, you had a question about the the affordability of the sensors. Um, some of the sensors are, are really uh, cheap. For example, you know, light turning on, turning off lights is not that expensive. Uh, you know, getting a video camera uh, connected to your phone, uh, connected to your home, uh, is also not that expensive these days. There are very small, um, low ex low cost uh, video cameras available uh, where you can just stick it in. It connects to your uh, Wi-Fi at the home. Uh, you can get your feed. Um, so, so depending upon the use case, uh, some some sensors are uh, expensive. Some sensors are, are not uh, not that expensive. Some of them uh, you can do it your own. Uh, I think uh, I think Madam talked about you know, what type of projects uh, students can do uh, at home. There are plenty of uh, use cases to do this type of sensors. Uh, you know, the security uh, camera sensor could be a could be a great one. Motion sensor, uh, proximity sensor. Uh, I think I'll also cover uh, ultrasonic sensors as well. So some of those sensors can be uh, utilized in home, and you can do it as your uh, as your project for for, for for either as a hobby or part of your course. But there are uh, use cases to to do that, and these sensors uh, they are readily available, uh, and, and they can be purchased online these days. And you can uh, you can assemble them and then start using them at your home. Some sensors, uh, no, you cannot do them on your own. You need to have a company uh, that would come. For example, any one of these, you know, AC, heating, uh, smart media appliances, all those things, uh, we cannot do it by ourselves. It needs to be uh, supported by the company that is uh, giving us the, the appliance. Um, so it's a combination of uh, sensors that uh, we can do it uh, on our own. And then some of them uh, we need to get um, support only from the from the companies that are providing the uh, the the services as well as the the feature uh, for sensing. Um, I think the motion sensors is something that uh, at least I've seen uh, in many homes uh, a very important um, uh, aspect because, uh, like I mentioned, it directly impacts the security of the home. Um, so, which is very essential these days. Uh, we live in a very strange world. Uh, it is important to to secure uh, people who are inside the home. Um, so, motion sensors are are, are in great demand. Um, so, there are several types of uh, sensors. Uh, I think uh, you all would have heard about the, the passive infrared uh, sensors. Basically, uh, it's your uh, the remote control. It's the same technology used. The infrared uh, signals are used. It detects the body heat. And uh, it's basically an infrared energy, and uh, it determines whether uh, somebody is there or, or somebody is not there. And uh, it's most widely used for sensors for home security, like I mentioned. Uh, the the use case that we talked about, you know, somebody at the door delivering food, uh, the the passive infrared uh, sensor can detect uh, that there is a person because there's a body heat. It detects that, and then sends you a signal saying that uh, somebody at the door, right? Uh, you can get fancy by putting a camera and, and uh, you don't want that camera to be sending the video all the time. If there is nobody at the door, uh, you don't want that uh, data to be uh, transmitted all the time. So, so it's a combination of uh, a motion sensor that is um, uh, infrared based. And then only if it detects somebody, then it can turn on the, uh, the camera. So the camera can start sending the, the video feed uh, 
to 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 for people inside the home um, so it creates a protective grid uh, so this is the second mechanism uh, where if a moving object blocks uh, multiple grid zones uh, and the infrared energy levels change the sensors are trapped so basically uh, it's just not about uh, uh, one one infrared um, a sensor it's a, it's a it's a grid of uh, sensors and uh, so if any one of them is is uh, uh, is blocked uh, then uh, then it can send a signal saying that uh, you know i am blocked that's all it knows uh, so the upper uh, layers of the software can determine uh, that hey somebody is uh, blocking so it could be uh, it could be a human being it could be an animal it could be a thing uh, so depending upon the use case uh, one can uh, infer uh that uh, uh, there is uh, somebody at the door or somebody uh, something is at the door so that is one technology the second technology is microwave um so this is um, uh, this also is something that you would have probably heard in your uh, in your kind of coursework it sends out microwave pulses uh, to measure the reflection of the moving objects so basically uh, if if something is moving uh, somebody is moving and uh, uh, let's say going from one place to the other inside the in the in your front yard uh then the microwave signals can uh, can detect that and uh, so this is the another um, uh, type of sensor that is used in uh, uh in in motion sensors then there are sensors that combine both of them so as you can see the 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 error rate right you know the the false they call it the false positive or the false negative uh, so uh, basically it uh, it sends something but really there's nobody Uh, or it did not sense when there was so when there was somebody right so the error rate in these things uh, can be a problem um, so a lot of the companies who provide the sensors uh, they provide both technology so they go they use both pir uh, which is a passive infrared as well as the microwave technology for redundancy so even if one of them uh, did not catch the the the, uh, the the motion sensing the other one can uh, can catch it so that is the uh that is the way the companies are making sure that um, it is redundant uh they say the, then there are few other things for example area reflective type uh, it emit infrared from an led uh, using the reflection the sensor may basically use some sort of an optics mechanism to uh, to measure the, the the reflected light and and then determine whether uh, how far this person is uh, whether this person is very close to the door or is it away because we also don't want anybody who is going on the street uh, to trigger the sensor saying that you know uh, you need to watch out so basically the distance uh, between the the door and the and the person uh, is also going to be important um, so so some advanced sensors use the uh, uh, the led uh, uh, and then use the reflection ultrasonic uh, same thing uh, instead of light we use the uh, the ultrasonic sound waves and uh, it again reflects the get it uh, gets the reflection of the of the uh, ultrasonic waves and then depending upon the threshold you know you can set the threshold and say the reflection uh, if the if the delta between uh, what uh, what is sent and what is received is is, is over a threshold then you know that um, there is an object um, so it's very similar to how the ultrasonic scanning that we do and things like that so same technology is used in uh, in sensors uh, vibration i think this is an important one um, basically uh, let's say somebody uh, again a security scenario like i mentioned a lot of these motion sensors are used in a security scenario um, so basically somebody you know broke the door or some loud noise has happened somebody trashed the the window uh, window glasses are broken and that creates uh, noise and vibration and there are sensors that can detect that and uh, so this is the same thing that is also used in automobiles as well uh, that can detect um, a vibration and uh, and trigger uh, your airbags to go up like uh, you would have seen uh, the modern cars have got uh, airbags and uh, they they operate in a very similar way they look at uh, impact and vibration and then it triggers the sensor to 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 launch the um, the the uh, the bags so same thing in homes there are um, uh so they basically detect the 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 sound or the vibration and uh, accelerometer is is one of them uh the other one is a piezo electric device i think both of them you you could be familiar with it uh, but these are some of the uh, sensors that um, at least i've seen in 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 homes uh, where they are used for um, security purposes so 
I thought this would be an interesting one. So if you are interested in uh, any one of them, please do uh, more research on them. Plenty of uh, literature available on the internet on uh, motion sensors and how they are used in uh, in smart homes. This is not only in smart homes. I think this session, uh, as I talked about, it is also for small businesses. Like if, let's say if you have a, a grocery store, if you have a, you know, a beauty salon, uh, any of these uh, small businesses, uh, you're running an electrical store or, or you run an internet cafe, whatever small business that you're running, uh, you want to protect it. Right? So so a lot of them have uh, sensors these days uh, because you may have some very uh, expensive equipment in your, uh, in your, in your business. Um, so in fact, some of the insurance companies, you know, they look at these sensors and depending upon the sensors that you have, uh, your insurance rates can be, can be lower or higher. Uh, so, so it does direct impact on, on how small businesses operate. Uh, so, so though we uh, we talked about only the homes, uh, but businesses, small businesses especially, uh, are going to be uh, using these sensors to make sure that their um, businesses are, are protected. Uh, here is an example. Um, typically, what happens is in a home. Uh, you have your uh, home control devices. You, your home control devices can be, uh, you know, your your router or your like your cable router. There could be small boxes in there uh, that could be uh, controlling the devices. And uh, here is all of your home appliances, like uh, Internet of Things. Uh, this is where your uh, your fridge or a microwave or a washing machine. They all come under this category. And typically, the smart home they have a smart home server. Uh, it's basically like your um, like a computer. The the uh, the company. Let's say if you're uh, if you're signing up with a company that say, hey, I want to enable uh, my home with uh, smart home uh, devices, then they would come and install uh, the smart home control devices as well as a server, and that basically has some processors and 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 actuators and so on. It has a little database also that basically keeps track of all the devices that you have at home. For example, you may have a video camera. Uh, you may have a temperature sensor, you may have a motion sensor. Uh, so a lot of this information, where is it kept? Is it in the uh, window number 10, window number five, uh, door number seven? Is it in the living room? It is in the kitchen. Uh, a lot of that information is, uh, is maintained in this, in this database. Um, so the sensors need to talk to the server as well as it, uh, it talks to the database as well. Um, so given some some examples, you know, for example, if you want to detect the water leaks and its prevention, uh, one first use case is your home appliance will uh, send that information to the smart server saying that, hey, in the kitchen area, I see a water leak. Uh, so maybe the kitchen sink is, uh, is leaking and uh, it detects that and sends it to the smart home server uh, that sends it to the cloud. And then uh, we as a user or a consumer. Uh, will get that notification saying that uh, listen your uh, kitchen uh, you could be you know in your office and uh, suddenly you may get an alert saying that your uh, kitchen sink is uh, leaking um, so it is uh, it's quite useful to have this type of uh, uh, equipment uh, for for smart homes smoke detectors this is again uh, may not be a big deal for uh, for us but in uh, in in cold countries uh, where um, you know, you 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 burn a lot of wood, right? To to heat with the to heat up the home, and some of these um, uh, fireplaces, they call it inside the home, uh, they can create, they can generate smoke, and uh, or even in our own homes, if uh, uh, if you left uh, some cooking appliance uh, for a long time and it has uh, uh, catch fire, caught fire, and then it is uh, generating smokes, so smoke detectors can can save lives. Uh, so this is another use case where um, the smoke detector can, the, the, the control device can, can identify that and send directly to the server and then eventually come to our smartphone uh, saying that, you know, the smoke detector in, 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 in the bedroom is, uh, is, is off, is, is going off. So you may want to go take a look at that. Uh, so that's the second use case. Uh, incident management, I think incident management is nothing but, you know, the security, somebody at the door use case. Uh, it's very similar to uh, uh, to the other one where the the the, the motion sensor and the front of the home uh, sends that information to the server, which eventually sends it to the cloud and then come to our uh, uh, smartphone as a user. 
so just gives you an idea of uh, implementation scenarios uh, how the sensors uh, are working in conjunction with uh, uh, servers inside our home and how all of that is um, uh, is coordinated very nicely to make sure uh, that we protect the the home whether it is from disaster or from intrusion uh, or from general maintenance uh, purposes so this is one example of uh, of a smart home implementation. Then um, uh, here is an example. This is actually uh, my home pool here in uh, California. Uh, so I have a pool in my backyard and um, uh, there are functions within the pool, uh, swimming pool where you need to monitor and control. Uh, some of the parameters are, uh, here is a system that, uh, that I recently installed. Uh, it's from a company called Hayward OmniLogic and then they, they gave me an app on my phone, uh, so I'll show you in a minute how how that works. Uh, but the idea here is um, uh, it, there are a lot of characteristics of the pool. Uh, one of them is pool filter. Generally, uh, in the swimming pool, you don't change the water uh, for a long time. So what you do is you uh, you take the water, send it through the filter, and then uh, so the pure water, purified water, will get back into the pool. Uh, so the pool filter pump is a very important uh, element of the uh, uh, of the pool and its speed and the schedule and operational hours are all things that you can uh, control uh, through sensors so that is one of them uh, then pool cleaner for example if it is an open pool you may have leaves and dirt and things like that could be falling in and uh, generally there is a, a kind of a mini uh, water-based uh, cleaner it's like a vacuum cleaner uh, that goes inside the pool and picks up all the dirt and picks up all the leaves and uh, and then it collects them in a in a basket so that pool cleaner is also uh, going to be an important one and uh, pool heater i mean colder countries like like uh, here in us uh, heater is an important one uh, because you may uh, you may have you know winter time uh, you may not be able to use the pool at all because it is uh, water is extremely cold and uh, so there are solar heat, water heat, pool heaters available. And the heater setting, you can go set the temperature. Uh, you want to say, I want to set the temperature uh, to be, you know, 90 degree uh, Fahrenheit. And I want this duration to be this long. So that's the third um, uh, attribute of the pool. Uh, pool lights, if you have a large pool, then you may have multiple lights uh, so that you can uh, you can swim in at night time. So pool lights is another, um, another um, thing that you control. And last but not least is the chemical balance, right? Uh, so if you are interested in interdisciplinary thing, um, the, the 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 chemical balance of uh, of uh, chlorine and water uh, in the in the pool is, is an important one. So it measures that also, and get alerts when more chlorine needs to be added. So basically, uh, the the pool maintenance the person would come in and add chlorine at regular time to make sure that your pool is uh, usable. Uh, otherwise, it becomes uh, toxic. So maintaining the correct balance uh, and uh, and adding chlorine becomes an important one as well. So so what I'll do is I'll just connect uh, my app and then show you how it how it works. So for that, I use an app called um, Wiser. Let me share my screen. Just a moment. So here is an interesting um, uh, app on my PC uh, that I can take a look at all uh, things that are happening on my phone. So, so I can connect to it. Let's see if I can bring it up. So I can go to this app called um, OmniLogic. So this is a company that, um, that I talked about. So in real time, it is collecting uh, information about uh, my pool. And as you can see, it is almost 10 o'clock at night here. And uh, 38 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and uh, it's close to you know two degrees Celsius or something like that. And maybe four or five degrees Celsius. And uh, so as you can see here in the, the winter time, 
uh, the water pumps, uh, the water pipes can can freeze and they can break. Right? You would have probably heard about that in your in your um, even high school. They talk about that. So you, what happens at the time the filter pump um, uh, automatically turns on, make sure that there is water flow in the pipe uh, so that it doesn't uh, clog and and then break the pipes. So right now, though it is at night time, my pump is on. So if I click on it, it tells me that uh, my filter pump is on. It is on high freeze protect mode. That means uh, the temperature is uh, freezing, uh, cold, and uh, the, the pump needs to be on. And uh, then, for example, lights is off. I can turn on the lights, uh, and then I can set a timer. I can add more schedules and things like that. The second one is a cleaner. So this is the cleaner that I talked about, uh, where you can set the timer for the cleaner. So if you want the robot cleaner to go and take out all the leaves from my pool, uh, I can set the timer, I can, I can schedule it Monday through, uh, for example, here the Monday through um, Saturday, uh, you can specify the time. So, so you, can, you can do a lot of stuff. Uh, so all of this is uh, done through sensors because uh, they, they detect the presence of the cleaner as well as the, the pump that is connected to the cleaner, all of that information comes to the, to the app uh, through Wi-Fi. And uh, last one is the heater. Uh, where you can um, uh, you can say that the heater is off right now because it is winter time. Uh, we cannot use the uh, pool right now. The water temperature is 49 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, it is very cold. So unless it goes to you know 80 degrees, uh, you can't uh, get in, inside the pool. So so it gives you an idea of uh, uh, how automation uh, has really uh, helped. The sensors have really helped in in automating the. Uh, the the monitoring and uh, controlling uh, the pool uh, functions. I have not turned on the the pH balance, uh, but that is something that I can add as well. So hope that gives you an idea of uh, uh, the 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 um, the sensors that are used in um, in home automation. Let me stop here. Go back to our presentation. Okay, so that's so that's the um, so that is my last slide on the um, uh, smart home implementation. So let me do a quick review. Uh, in terms of the consumer IoT, mainly for smart homes and appliances. Uh, we talked about the sensors used, especially on the uh, role of motion sensors, which is probably more relevant to uh, uh, physics students and then some implementations as well. So, so that is what I have for this session. So let me pause here, see if you have any questions, comments, feedback. from anybody on any one of these, either the industrial IoT or consumer IoT. I think uh, tomorrow we'll talk more about speech analysis, uh, the the voice synthesis and, and speech is becoming an important um, sense as well. So, so there are sensors who will understand your speech and then translate them into some action. So we'll cover that uh, in tomorrow's session and then we'll wrap it up with uh, research topics uh, in terms of what areas in sensor research, there are there is a journal dedicated for uh, for sensor research. So we'll take a look at them as well, and then uh, go through some of the uh, some of the uh, activities that are going on in the in the sensor research area. Uh, we'll we'll take a look at specific examples as, as well, and then uh, maybe that will give you some motivation in terms of how to uh, pursue your research in that in that space. Okay, any questions? Uh, we can also uh, put down your questions in the chat room. Sir? Yes. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, Akash. Sir. Sir, how sensors are uh, how sensors and IoT are helpful in our defense area, sir? 
defense area yes sir okay in the military right in the military and defense that's what you meant yes sir military air force like that certainly certainly i think the location right uh, gps location is a very important you want to know where your um, uh, military equipments are your tanks are uh, your your personnel are so gps uh, location is very important uh, plus uh, the the terrain right you want to know more about the terrain whether it is um, uh your moisture content is important plus uh, your air quality air uh, yeah, the wind speed all of these weather conditions are also going to be very important especially in the in the military field right so understanding um, the uh, the the surroundings uh, of a soldier uh, and then reporting back to uh, say, to the air commander in chief and say hey this is how the the condition is for the soldiers so we can uh, do a much better job in in protecting our soldiers uh, if we understand their environment and even including their own uh, health as well right you can monitor uh, the health uh, their their blood pressure their oxygen level so many of these things can be uh, can be automated um, so we did not touch upon the the medical aspect of uh, sensors Uh, in our uh, in our lecture series but uh, certainly uh, lots of them by now because of covid you would have probably heard a lot about the the oxygen level uh, all the various uh, key parameters that are needed to keep somebody healthy uh, so you can measure the 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 soldiers um, uh, health vital statistics uh, as well as the the surrounding so those are the key things that uh, Uh, any uh, uh, you know uh, military uh, lead or a commander would like to know you know how are my uh, soldiers doing uh, in terms of their health wise are they uh, are they protected from the surrounding point of view uh, are they equipped with the right uh, amount of ammunition and how is the uh, the the enemy right uh, that is also important so so there are sensors and for each one of them uh, sensors can play a play a major role okay sir so a great question i think a um, uh, lot of the times what happens uh, akash is the the research uh, need comes sometimes from the from the defense industry uh, so because uh, that is one place where uh, the the government plays a lot of emphasis on because we need to protect our uh, country we, we need to protect our country I mean we need to protect our soldiers uh, so we need to give them the best so so a lot of the uh research goes into making sure that we have the best equipment best uh, tools and uh, best technology available to 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 military and then comes the to the civilian right uh, i've seen a lot of the technology they'll say why wow, it is used in the military and now it is available to to the civilians uh, so especially in research uh, this is a great area as well okay sir sir is there any harmful impact of sensor on human kind depends upon um, uh, when we are all surrounded by uh, electromagnetic radiation right i think uh, uh, whether it is because of uh, the sun radiation in the planet itself uh, it, it generate its own uh, magnetic uh, waves um, so so far uh, there is no uh, you know definite study that says Uh, there is a harmful impact of sensors uh, and the sensors that we are talking about uh, they uh, they for example they they are very tiny they they are not uh, uh, the the electromagnetic waves that it generates it's not huge um, so and especially things like vibration and pressure and temperature uh, those uh, those sensors are really harmless uh, they don't uh, do anything to to human being women Uh, we have heard stories about you know cell phones creating cancers and so on uh, but uh, these sensors that we are talking about is no way close to uh, what a cell phone is uh, they are very very tiny uh, they they are they are designed to do a specific uh, sensing uh, function and uh, they don't um, interfere of course there are uh, specific sensors that could be um, harmful and and those things are not advised for uh, for consumers Uh, whether it is you know electromagnetic or the, the radiation sensors uh, those sensors uh, uh, the government will make sure that they are not used in the in the consumer iot okay sir thank you sir
जो बेड क्वेश्चन हर्ष एनी अदर क्वेश्चन Yeah, for some reason your microphone is not working. You can uh, type it up, type it in the in the chat room. That's also fine. Sir, is the session over? Yeah, my session is over, madam. I'm just okay. waiting. Okay. Question and answers, right? Right. Uh -huh. okay. This question and answer discussion. Yeah. Okay. I will uh, post the attendance link. Students, please uh, put your attendance. Sir, so tomorrow after the eighth session, we'll have the ass uh, assessment, sir. Sure, madam. Yeah. so once the assessment is done uh, we can uh, based on the eligibility we can uh, give the certificate sure madam so do you want to share the assessment and the tomorrow session madam after the eighth one uh, no uh, actually i am i will uh, do the google we'll form sir got it madam and i will share the link here okay after like this after the session let the students be here and uh, let them do the assessment immediately understand madam thank you yeah. now i got uh, so students please uh, don't miss tomorrow session uh, those who want to gain the certificate please uh, see that you are attending both sessions and uh, there will be an assessment let's wait for two more minutes if there are any questions or um, uh, if they got the uh, uh, attendance link then we will uh, end the meeting madam thank you sir thank you madam okay so i think we can uh, sign off madam thank you all yes sir yes sir we'll meet tomorrow uh, students tomorrow again same time 10 o'clock so there will be a winding up session tomorrow as well as assessment so i request all the students participants to join on time tomorrow excellent so thank okay, you sir thank you yeah thank so, you sir, sir thank you ma'am please put your uh, attendance See, just yes, like you cannot get the um, certificate. Okay, we will look into the attendance and the assessment, and then only the certificate will be provided. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, madam. Okay, we will end the meeting. I'll stop the recording and end the meeting. <laughs>